and then some things about what body cells have in them. So a quick review. Meiosis is basically over in the first two phases. The stuff that we care about happens in those first two phases. Not early in the first phase. Early in the first phase looks just like mitosis. And you know all the stuff here about the nuclear envelope disappearing, about the chromosomes forming, and the spindle getting built and all that. But it's late in prophase one that the first thing happens. What is the first thing that's really important about meiosis? What do we call it? You're gonna want your little handout page that you wrote in. What happens in late prophase one that starts to make sexual reproduction way different from asexual reproduction? Yeah, the homologous chromosomes find each other. And when they find each other, they do this very strange thing that nobody believed at first called crossing over. They trade pieces. They become little Frankenstein chromosomes. Uh, with And remember, these pairs, when you have these pairs in your cells, you have pairs because one came from your mom and one came from your dad. One whole chromosome of each pair came from each parent. You are now taking what they gave you separately and shuffling it up, mixing it up, so that when you deal it out, it's going to be different. Crossing over. That's what that's called. It creates a whole bunch of genetic variation. The other thing that creates that variation is the very next phase, metaphase one, where it's totally random which chromosome, mom or dad, winds up on which side of the line. So basically, this is like flipping four coins at once, 16 different possibilities. For you, it's like two to the 23rd different possibilities, like millions of possibilities of how these things line up on either side of the line. Those two things make us different. Those two things make anything that does sexual reproduction different from every other member of its species genetically. This creates genetic variation. Beyond this, it's just two rounds of mitosis. Beyond this, it's okay, they separate, the butt thing forms, they make new nuclei, we get two new cells with half the normal number of chromosomes. They line up again, they separate down at the centromere level now, and we have these little half chromosomes and they, they do the, the telophase thing, and now we've got four. And what we have is four genetically different cells with half the normal number of chromosomes, which if you're male are gonna become sperm cells, which if you're female are gonna become an egg and three not egg cells that are genetically different because of that crossing over an independent assortment that happened at the beginning. Questions at this point? I'm gonna, if there's no questions, I'm gonna assume you kind of get this stuff. And we're about to move on to having our elves actually do this stuff. Okay, good. All right, a brief word about what's in cells as far as how many chromosomes. Basically, we can say that every cell in the body of most sexually reproducing organisms has the diploid number of chromosomes. 46 for you is the diploid number of chromosomes. Eight for a fruit fly, 72 for a potato. Really no way of knowing. No predictability to how many chromosomes a species has. You just gotta kinda look and see. Yeah. How does a potato have chromosomes? Because the potato comes from a plant. And plants are sexually reproducing living things, believe it or not. Remember we talked about plant sex and like flowers and pollen and all that? Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, I know. It's definitely weird. Gavin? Yes. Looks like the max amount of chromosomes a human can have. What's the max amount a human can have over the limit? Um, well, plenty of humans have 47. Uh, that the most common way humans have an extra chromosome is Down syndrome. And they've got an extra uh, 21st chromosome. So they have three instead of two on the 21st pair. As far as more than that, I, I think there are several disorders that are like that, where you've got one extra. 
don't know what they all are or whether you can have two at once. Not more than a couple extra, I would say. And it has pretty serious effects in any of those cases. Um, yeah, a lot in a lot of cases, having the wrong number of chromosomes is just fatal. You don't see those people because they, they, they don't survive. In a few cases, it is survival, like like like, like Down syndrome is survivable. Um, but I'm sure there's plenty more cases you don't know about because they don't make it. So every cell in your body has the diploid number, 46, except the cells where? Where are we going to find cells that have a different number of chromosomes than that? Reproductive cells. In your reproductive organs, right? In the places where you make sperm and eggs, ovaries, testes. For you, uh, for plants, we're talking about the flower, right? Flowers are the sex organs of plants, which is interesting. So you think about flower shops and that we give flowers to other people. Um, yeah, so gametes, sperm and eggs, wherever they're made, whatever kind of creature we are talking about, it's their gametes that are going to have that half number. It's their sperm and eggs. They're going to have 23 for you, 4 for a fruit fly, 36 for a potato. Yeah. What would a potato look like for support? Now, plants survive, I think we talked about this, plants survive extra whole sets of chromosomes where animals do not. So a lot of times, if you see at like a county fair that award-winning potato or tomato, when you see gigantic fruit, that is usually because they've been mutated to have a whole extra set or half set of chromosomes. So bigger, I think, is the answer to what a potato would look like with more chromosomes. No, animals really don't survive it. So the final weird thing here is that in humans and in fact most mammals, there's a weird pair of chromosomes. There's all the, you know, for you, you've got 21 normal pairs of chromosomes that we call, this is probably a word to get used to, we call the normal pairs of chromosomes autosomes. Autosomes are the first 22 pairs. They just behave like normal chromosomes. Then there's the weird pair that we put last, the X and the Y chromosome. If you're female, you've got a pair of Xs that really, they behave fairly normally. And then if you're male, you got the X and the Y, which are different. The Y is missing a lot of the genes that the X has. And the X is actually missing some of the ones the Y has, which makes for some weird genetics problems, which we'll do. But of course, those chromosomes and those chromosomes alone are the ones that make the differences between the two genders of most mammals, humans included, right? Those are the ones responsible for boys being different from girls. So we call them the sex chromosomes. And like I said, genetics problems get a little different when you've got, say, a gene that there's an allele for it on the X chromosome, but not on the Y. We have to work problems a little differently there. We're about to get into that. Any questions about numbers of chromosomes inside living cells? Cool, so what we're about to do is take your diploid set of elf chromosomes that has genes for you know 14 different elf, elf traits, and you're gonna take those chromosomes and you're gonna take them through meiosis, crossing over and independent assortment included, 
to make four little elf gametes. And then we're going to roll some dice to choose those gametes to make some little elf babies. The babies aren't coming today. Don't get too excited. We are going to do crossing over at least. So grab that set of chromosomes and grab your scissors. Raise your hand if you need scissors. If you don't have any, I will get you. Listen, look here. You all got to be careful here. I mean, you do need to be careful, but like just cut out blocks to put on something. Like, like don't hug the line to make it perfect. Just, just like this is fine. You want all your chromosomes, which have the letters on them already. Again, cut them up without worrying about staying around the lines too much. Just cut out blocks of them. Um, I'm going to give you. Recycling is in the middle of the room. Just put your scrap paper there. Probably not today. Once you've got them all cut out, kind of jumble them up on your desk and kind of clear everything else away from them so you got a clean playing field. Oh, this is bad. Okay, got them all jumbled up. Welcome to early pro phase one, right? They're all jumbled up. There's no rhyme or reason. We've gotten rid of the nucleus. We've just got a bunch of diploid chromosomes floating around with the different alleles. All right, one mom and one dad chromosome. You can see which ones are homologous to each other. They're all spread out. Let's move from early prophase one 
into late prophase one, which means, of course, that the homologous pairs find each other. That this happens. They pair up. They're not lined up yet. The pairs just find each other. So put the put the similar chromosomes next to each other. And make it so you can see all the letters, because what we're about to do is crossing over. We're going to do it kind of by hand. And here's what it's going to look like. You're only going to do it, first of all, where it matters. It's not going to matter, for example, here and here. It, it wouldn't matter if you crossed a big T and a big T, right? That's not going to change it. So you're only going to do it where your elf is heterozygous. And you're going to pick four spots. <clears throat> you're going to pick four genes that your elf is heterozygous for. So for example, I'm going to pick E for my elf. And you can pick either, you know, any spot here, but you're going to be switching a big E and a little E. So like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to tear a this, this E. I'm gonna make this one big E, I'll make this one Lily. That's exactly what yours would look like if you did what I did. You know, I didn't have to choose those. I could have done this one and this one, or you know, this one and this one. Pick a big and a little for a gene and switch them. Cross them both out and write in the other letter. You're gonna do that in four different places on four different genes that are heterozygous. Again, it doesn't matter if I do that on the M's for my elf, because they're all little. Won't matter if I cross it. I'm going to pick something like, okay, the D here. I'm going to do this D and this D. I'm going to change this one to a big D and this one to a little D. There's two of my four. What if you have way more than four that you can switch? We're still only going to do four. Yep. Yeah, you should have a, a fair amount of heterozygous because I rigged the odds that way. Right? There were more dice rolls that would result in heterozygous than homozygous. So four instances of crossing over written into your thing. Any questions? Cool. Now, once you've got your four crossovers done, now it's time for the independent assortment part. Go ahead and line your chromosomes up in pairs vertically. Perfect. Doing great. Now pick three of the five pairs as randomly as you can. I, I could have you flip coins, but I'm not going to. Pick three of the five pairs and just trade places. Pick three of the five pairs and switch them. That's all. Once you have done your three switches, let's move to anaphase one, where you move the pairs apart from each other. And you should have now have two sets of chromosomes.
and you're about to draw where you're at with meiosis one being over. Okay, so all we're doing, and I think this will probably wrap up our day today, is the place where it says end of meiosis one, where there's two big bubbles to draw in. You're actually going to, you can re-jumble up each half, so each set of chromosomes, you keep them separate, but you should have two jumbled up sets of chromosomes. You're going to draw those in those bubbles. Now, when I say draw those, here, let me get you the right spot. You do not have to draw them in a perfect cartoon way, right? They don't have to look exactly like things. What they do have to have is the right gamma or the right um the right alleles on them. So for example, it's perfectly okay to draw your, your chromosome like this and then just say, okay, this is the one where there was crossing over. So I got a big E here and a little E here, and then a is it T? So there's a there's two big T's here. And this one over here, same deal. And I have Little e and the big e. So feel free to use stick figures, stick figure chromosomes, but make sure you get the letters right. Okay, and you should have a picture here of the things that, that are in either cell with crossovers completed and having independently assorted. Does that make sense? Everybody good? Okay. So you're gonna to have to look at the pieces of paper that you sorted here to, to draw the right stuff. And at this point is where we're gonna kind of pause. I'll be passing out paper clips and you will be paper clipping your chromosomes together in two stacks to save them for tomorrow.